Proper insulin injection technique is critical to managing your diabetes. Whether you're new to injecting insulin or just want a refresher, I think you'll find this video demonstration will make you more comfortable with the process. I'm going to cover the basics of how to mix and inject insulin with a syringe, but if your doctor has suggested a different method, always follow your doctor's instructions. For this demonstration, I'll be using a half milliliter BD insulin syringe with the BD ultrafine six millimeter needle. And I'll be mixing two different U100 insulins, 23 units of cloudy insulin and 10 units of clear insulin for a total dose of 33 units. This is only an example, so be sure to check with your doctor to determine the syringe and the dose that are right for you. First, gather all your supplies onto a flat surface. You'll need your syringe, the bottles of clear and cloudy insulin, two alcohol swabs, and a sharps container. After washing your hands with soap and water, open the alcohol swabs and place them on top of the packages. Before I continue, I want to make sure you're familiar with the parts of the syringe. The largest part, called the barrel, has markings that are used to measure your insulin. A half milliliter barrel can hold up to 50 units. The long lines mark every five units, and the shorter lines in between indicate single units. The barrel has wings, or flanges, on the bottom to help you hold the syringe. A white cap covers the end of the plunger. Inside the barrel, the plunger has a black rubber stopper that moves as you push or pull the plunger. At the other end of the syringe is the needle, which is covered by an orange cap. Make sure your syringe has an orange cap and that the barrel is printed with U100 only. If your syringe doesn't have these features, it's not designed for insulin. Unless your doctor tells you otherwise, only use an insulin syringe. Next, let's look at our insulin bottle. If you're using a new bottle of insulin, remove the bottle's plastic cap and throw it away. On the insulin label, write the date you opened the bottle. That way you'll know when a month has gone by and it's time to dispose of the insulin. Before injecting, always check both bottles of insulin closely. If they have any lumps or crystals or a strange color, dispose of the insulin and use a new bottle. If you have any questions about the way it looks, check with your pharmacist. If the cloudy insulin looks okay, gently roll the bottle between your hands about 20 times until the liquid is well mixed and has an even look. Be sure never to shake your insulin. That could create air bubbles or even damage it. And there's no need to roll the clear insulin. Next, use one of the alcohol swabs to wipe the top of both bottles. Then let the alcohol air dry. Now, when you mix insulin, the first step is to inject air into each bottle equal to the amount of insulin that you intend to take from each bottle. This makes it easier to get insulin into the syringe. To get started, twist and remove the white cap from the end of the plunger. Then, pull the orange cap off the needle, making sure to pull straight off to avoid damaging the needle. In this example, my dose is 33 units, made up of 23 units of cloudy insulin, mixed with 10 units of clear insulin. Always put air into the cloudy insulin first. So to get 23 units of air into the cloudy insulin bottle, first, I need to get 23 units of air into the barrel of the syringe. To do this, simply pull the plunger until the end of the rubber stopper closest to the needle goes past the 20 unit mark to the third small line. This is the 23 unit mark. Now, hold the syringe like a pencil with your dominant hand and hold the insulin bottle on a flat surface with your other hand. Place the needle's point directly above the center of the bottle's rubber top, being careful not to touch the metal rim with the tip of the needle. Gently push the needle straight through the top of the bottle until the entire needle goes in. Then, slowly push down on the plunger to push the air in the syringe into the bottle. You don't want to draw any cloudy insulin into the syringe yet. Remove the syringe from the bottle of cloudy insulin and set the bottle aside. Next, we'll inject air into the clear insulin bottle. I need 10 units of air in the bottle, so first, I'll get 10 units of air into the barrel of the syringe. To do this, simply pull the plunger until the rubber stopper reaches the 10 unit mark. Again, hold the syringe like a pencil and hold the clear insulin bottle on a flat surface with your other hand. Place the needle's point at the center of the bottle, avoiding the metal rim. Gently push the needle straight through the top of the bottle until the entire needle goes in. 
Then slowly push down on the plunger to transfer the air in the syringe into the bottle. Now, with the syringe still in the bottle, turn both the insulin bottle and the syringe upside down so the bottle is on top of the syringe. Make sure the needle tip is below the level of the insulin left in the bottle. If the tip is above the insulin level, you'll need to pull the needle out a bit. To draw insulin into the syringe, slowly and steadily pull down on the plunger until the end of the black rubber stopper closest to the needle is even with the line on the syringe indicating your dose. In this case, 10 units. It's important to pull slowly since pulling too fast will create tiny air bubbles in the syringe. These air bubbles take the place of your insulin, which keeps you from getting your full dose. So before removing the needle from the bottle, look for air bubbles in the barrel of the syringe. If you see any air bubbles, slowly push the plunger until all of the clear insulin is back in the bottle. Then redraw the insulin more slowly. Continue to check for air bubbles as you go. Repeat these steps until there are no air bubbles in your syringe. Once you've drawn up your dose of clear insulin without any air bubbles, turn the syringe and the bottle back over and place the bottle on a flat surface. Then, holding the syringe by the barrel, carefully pull the needle straight out of the bottle. Now we're ready to draw the cloudy insulin. Hold the bottle of cloudy insulin upright on a flat surface. Once again, hold the syringe like a pencil with the needle directly above the center of the bottle's rubber top. Push the needle straight through the top of the bottle. Then turn both the bottle and syringe upside down, being careful not to push any clear insulin into the bottle. I already have 10 units of clear insulin in the syringe, so I want to draw an additional 23 units of cloudy insulin. Making sure the needle tip is below the level of the insulin, slowly and steadily pull down on the plunger until the end of the black stopper is even with the marker indicating your total mixed dose. In this example, I'm going to 33 units. Watch that you don't draw the black rubber stopper past your total dose because you can't push any extra mixed insulin in the syringe back into the bottle. If you were to push the mixture into the bottle, you wouldn't know how much cloudy insulin is actually in future doses drawn from that bottle. So after you've drawn the cloudy insulin, Turn the syringe and bottle back over and place the bottle on a flat surface. Holding the syringe by the barrel, carefully pull the needle straight out of the bottle and put the syringe down, being careful not to let the needle touch the surface. Whether you're injecting in the abdomen or thigh, as part of healthy injection practices, it's important to rotate your injection sites. Move the injection down by a finger's width with each injection and then change to a new site each week. So now, with the second alcohol swab, clean the small area of skin where you plan to inject. To clean the injection site, start in the middle of the site and then, moving in a circular motion, clean the whole area. To reduce any stinging, be sure to let the alcohol on your skin air dry completely before you inject. Next, using your thumb and other fingers gently, not too tight, pinch up the area of skin that you just cleaned. Pinching up helps to ensure the needle doesn't hit any muscle and that the insulin is released into the fatty tissue just beneath the skin. Now, in the middle of the pinch, insert the needle straight in. If you're very thin, you might need to inject at a 45 degree angle, but if you're not sure, discuss it with your healthcare professional. When the needle is fully inserted, slowly push in the plunger to deliver the insulin to your body. Then release the pinch as you slowly remove the needle. And that's it. To finish up, put the used syringe and needle in a sharps container, which you can buy at your local pharmacy. Be sure to check with your sanitation company regarding rules about proper disposal of used syringes and sharps containers. And remember, never reuse a needle after you've injected. The caps and alcohol swabs can be placed with your regular trash. That wasn't so hard, right? But it's really important. Proper insulin injection technique helps ensure better glucose control, which is critical in managing your diabetes. today and over the long term.